Hello friends and welcome to the second day of our Go Team Sew Along. Yesterday we cut the fabric and actually I was able to squeeze one more shirt out of the fabric that I have left over. So this way I can cover more options in, in the Sew Along videos. So I'm also going to be doing an option with long sleeves and cuffs and the hood. And I'm hacking it a little bit, not big hack, because I prefer my hoods to be lined. So um, I'm, I just cut two of the same, um, so instead of just one mirror image pair, I cut two of them, one for the lining, one for the main. And I'll show you how I do it so it is lined. And uh, the other option is the V-neck one that I cut during the video. And I also cut HTV for the sleeves instead of the <coughs> excuse me instead of the knit band. So I'll show you when we do the sleeves on day four. I think how I do HTV instead of the knit band. So for now, let's start by adding the uh, shoulder sleeve by sewing the shoulder sleeves uh, shoulder seams together. Most of the sewing for this pattern will be done between these two machines, my um, cover stitch and my serger. However, as always, you can use your um, sewing machine without any issues whatsoever for all the steps, as long as you use a stretch stitch to um, sew them together. So for the v-neck, you're going to take your shoulder seam and you're going to place it right sides together and stitch it with a half an inch seam allowance at the shoulders. Because the second option that I'm doing is with a hood, you'll see how different the yokes look when uh, sewn together at the shoulder seam. Okay, so this is what the V neckline looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and press my neckband lengthwise and uh, I'll be right back so we can pin it in place along the uh, neck opening. Okay, so my neckband is pressed lengthwise. I'm going to fold it, well, pressed like so, wrong sides together. And mark the center back with a little clip. center back and I'm going to match this center back to my center back notch that I put when I was cutting my fabric if you didn't just find the center back of your um, <coughs> of your uh, back yoke and pin that in place together and then you're going to bring your front all the way in front it does roll a little bit this fabric so you're going to bring that in like so all the way in and with a little bit of corner coming out on this side okay and we're going to be doing the exact same thing on the other side <coughs> I bring it all the way in, matching the raw edge here, and I should have a little bit of corner poking out here. So this is what it looks like from the wrong side and from the right side. Until that notch, your V uh, neck won't stretch, so it's one to one ratio up until that notch. 
okay and this is what it looks like and then on the other side I'll do the same thing see I'm not stretching the neckband where I have that notch I'm putting another pin so now I'm stretching the net band, net neck band to fit the neck opening only from notch to center back and add a couple of pins okay so only from this notch to the center back is where I'm stretching okay so now we're going to stitch this down using a half an inch seam <coughs> No puckering or wrinkles on your main and that you follow the seam allowance. <coughs> All right, so this is what your neck band should look like right now. Should look like there is. A little corner here then that's okay that's supposed to be there because we're going to be overlapping and before I do that I'm going to move to the cover stitch a little bit to where is my left and I'm going to be top stitching the seam allowance towards the yoke this is again an optional step but I do it on all my t-shirts like I don't skip this step it adds a nicer feel because the seam allowance tends to be itchy on the neck for some of us so this will keep it down flat The v-neck is done so if you're doing the v-neck you're pretty much done with today's steps you'll be overlapping here and pin it in, pinning it in place or you can do a basting stitch today or tomorrow because we're going to be adding this to the bodies tomorrow go ahead and give it a good press and this will be your check-in for day two if you're doing the hood option you're going to be placing your yoke pieces right sides together at the neck at the shoulder seam and this time the neckline will be in a circle it will be in a loop <clears throat> and this is um, applicable to both the crew neck and the um, hood that I'm adding right now will be your <coughs> excuse me shoulders sewn together you see I have my notch here for the front and notch for the back let's grab the hood I have two hood pieces uh, mirror images right sides together and I'm going to sew along the uh, back the top and the back with a half an inch seam allowance a non-line hood as shown in the pattern itself what you need to do right now is go ahead and press half an inch 
hem on the opening, on the face opening. And then you're going to top stitch this down using your cover stitch or your sewing machine. I'm not doing the unlined option because we prefer a lined hood around here. I'm not saying my kiddo is picky, but my kiddo is picky. <laughs> so I'm going to use the other hood piece. Again, it's cut the right sides together. And this will become my lining. And I'm doing the exact same steps. I'm sewing along, along the um, top and back of the hood. So now I'll take the lining and then the main fabric and place it right sides together at the seams right here, matching this seam. I'm going to put a pin and another one right here, kind of in the middle. And I'm going to sew right sides together along the front opening. This is where you would be doing the hem if you're not lining it. to top stitch along the um, front opening so where you would be having where you would have your hem you're going to top stitch and I'll do that with my cover stitch again everything that I'm doing on my cover stitch and the serger can be done on a sewing machine just make sure that you do use a stretch stitch like a triple stretch stitch or um, um, zigzag. And for top stitching, you can also use a twin needle. A good press and everything all your seams should be given a good press don't skip that because it will make a huge difference in the final result final product okay so what you want to do right now is grab the front of the hood and you want to bring them right sides together you want to bring them you want to overlap them where you have your notch if you notice when you cut your hood there is a notch, so you want to overlap that notch. And I'll show you what I, what I mean by that in just a second. Okay. So this, this is where the notch is. You see that notch? There's four layers with a notch that are overlapped right there. And this is the uh, one side. And here is the other side. So this is where it's overlapped. So you want to take the uh, front and back with the shoulder seams sewn together and place it right sides together 
and I like to, to bring it over my hood like this. So this is the yoke, this is the hood, and I'm matching the back with the back seam. I already have my notches done, but if you haven't, make sure that you mark the back, center back of the hood, of the um, yoke. And then I have my front and that will match the notch right here and then I'm putting a few pins you can always baste it in place if you're not sure that you can keep it straight when you run it through your serger you can always baste this part in place okay so now I'll just add a few pins around the hood just to hold it in place before I stitch it If you're doing the crew neck, you're quartering your, your um, neck band and you're pinning it in place just like I am right now. Right sides together. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Pinned. So I'm going to run a serger stitch with a half an inch seam allowance. Make sure that when you reach the front you have all your layers, you sew through all the layers because at one point there will be five layers to sew through. So go slow, give your serger a chance to adjust its tension if it's automatic. because it will go through a lot of layers. And I have also abused my serger blade by sewing some thick minky. So now I need to change the blade of the serger. So this is another reason why it's, it's really going through all the layers and cutting off the excess seam at the same time. So I might just reposition this. That's what happens when you're abusing the surgery. Okay, I do need to cut it and I believe the surgery came with one. I got this a year ago, so it is time to change the blade. You see, it doesn't want to cut, but I will change. Let me try it on the other side. the story change your blade don't wait until it refuses to cut to change it all right not the previous inside but I, I will make it pretty afterwards Anyways, this is what it looks like right now. See, this is the front with the overlapped hood. You can top stitch it all around if you would like. I do tend to top stitch, you don't have to, but I tend to top stitch just like I do on, on a regular neckband, just to keep the seam allowance down. And uh, that is it for day two. Post a picture of your uh, neckline and shoulder seam sewn in the comments of day two photo of the sew along album i will have these two posted and that is your check-in for today i'll see you back here tomorrow we'll be attaching the yoke to the bodice a pretty easy day talk to you soon bye